Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video which is actually pretty simple, pretty quick, um, in which I'll teach you guys how to create a kind of a user role system when you're building an API in Express. So basically a lot of people run into these problems where they have an API and they, they don't want all users to have access to every single um, endpoint, right? And that makes sense. So the name for this is authorization. You, you want to make sure that the user trying to reach an endpoint or trying to make an API call um, is authorized. However, there's many very secure ways of um, handling authorization, uh, mainly with like tokens and all the kind of stuff. However, um, today I'm going to just present a very simple um, example, which would be by using middlewares in each API endpoint, which requires some sort of permission or role. And that middleware will basically check to see if whoever is making this API call satisfies that condition. And uh, based on that, they will authorize the person to to make the request, right? And before we actually get into the video, just because I always forget this, if you guys could leave a like down below, I would really appreciate it because it 100% helped the algorithm. I know all YouTubers say this, but I never felt it this way until I actually started posting videos. It will definitely help the channel grow and help me continue posting this video. So I would really appreciate it if you guys could like the video right now and subscribe if you're not subscribed. So you can see right here, I have a very simple Express API, very simple example. I just basically created an Express API, told it to accept to parse the every JSON that uh, we receive through the body. And then we also tell it to listen to the server on port 3001. And we created three basic um, NPI endpoints over here. You can see we have a very simple app.get, which returns a JSON saying homepage. And you can see that I, I opened up Insomnia here. By the way, if you want to download Insomnia, it is basically a, a software which allows you to test your API endpoints. So let's test this. If I run this API endpoint, which is the route that we defined here, slash home, you can see that it works. It returns a JSON saying homepage. And the other ones work too. I created two more endpoints. One of them, um, you can access um, a specific course and see all the grades of all the students in that course. So you can see that right here, I create, I, this is just fake data, but it returns a JSON with like th uh, four people and their specific grades for that course, right? So you can see there's Pedro, got, who obviously got 100, and there's the, the other people as well. And this will be very important for our example and you guys will see later why. And then finally, we have here our final endpoint, which just basically, um, it, it just returns information about a course. Right now, we're, ju we're just returning a message saying you have permission to see the course and you can grab the course number um, through this parameters over here. And you can see that we can access whatever we put in these parameters by saying rec.params.number, which is what we defined over here. And this is basically it for defining our, our, our routes. You can see that right now, if I run, um, either course slash grades and the other and course and a course number, it will correctly show um, whatever we are, whatever we put inside of the routes, you'll see it returns the data. And if I say course um, slash like, I don't know, 220, it should return, you have permission to see course 220. Um, this will be the example we'll be handling because think about this. Um, if this was actually a, a website or an API which handles um, like school courses, right? University courses then and obviously not everyone should be able to make an API call to the course grades, right? Because that's just uh, completely like it, it wouldn't, that shouldn't be possible. We want to define certain permissions and user roles so that whoever is making this API call is authorized to make the, this API call and further see their, like the grades of the students. Same thing goes with the course number. If I'm taking course um, to 20 and course for 20, I don't know. I, I shouldn't have access to a course which has a number 352. That makes sense, right? So these are the two middlewares we're going to be creating to basically authorize the users who are trying to make this API calls. So in order to make those middlewares, we're going to create an external file over here, which will be called middlewares. And by the way, if you're not that familiar with middlewares in, in, in Node.js and Express, I have a video specifically on this. However, I will also go over them um, very simply um, in this video as well. So what we're going to do here uh, is we're going to create two functions which should run before each request. And basically to do that, we're going to create over here const. And one of them will be called authorize um, page. This will be the function which authorizes if you are able to see like the student grades. And then we're going to create another function or another middleware called auth course. Um, basically just checking if you have access to a specific course. 
And at the bottom, we want to be able to export both of this middleware so we can access them in every single file that we have. So we're going to say module.exports and we're going to pass here auth page, um, auth page and auth course. So that's basically it. And a middleware basically is just a function which can take arguments like, um, let me say something like, like rec, res, and next, which basically allows you to have access to um, information about the request. And you will use this function over here, you call this next function, whenever you want to say that um, this user or whoever's making this API call should move forward with the request. So imagine we are here, and we try to reach the course grades endpoint. Uh, we're going to check to see if I have access to this. If I have, I'll call this function called next, I'll say something like next. And this means it will completely ignore the rest and move forward with the API requ with a request and just run whatever is here. However, if I don't um, call this next, if I call something like rest dot, dot Jason, um, you're not permitted, you are not permitted something like this, right? Um, and then it won't move forward with the request and basically not authorize the user to make this API call. And this is important because this is how we're going to basically um, authorize our users. So well, let's think about this. Each user right here, obviously, this is just an example. So I'll simplify as, as, as possible. Um, let's think about this, each user should probably have like um, a name. Imagine I'll just write this right here. So you can see we have a name like Pedro. And they should probably have like, a field called courses, which represents all the courses they're taking. And those are numbers like to 20 um, to 13. I'm just making up numbers um, 185 or 87. And I don't know 287, something like that, right? So a list of courses they're taking, and also their role. So uh, Pedro, let's say that Pedro is a student, so we're gonna say student, right? And this is a very simple, ex simplified example of what I mean, this is what we're going to be passing on our body. But you can obviously store this in a database and uh, authorize it based on that. But this is what we're going to be passing in our body so that we know um, the role for the student and the courses that they're taking. So now that we have this, let's just delete this. And since we are accessing, we're authorizing the user in our uh, in our auth page right here based on our our role you have to basically determine who are the people who are able to access this um, endpoint. So what happens is we can come over, over here at the top and let's first um, import the middlewares that we just created. So require we obviously haven't write, written the, the, the middlewares yet, but we'll do that later. I just want to show you guys what I mean. Um, let's call auth page and auth course over here. And with for example, off page, what happens is right over here between the the the, the route and the function, we're going to call this function this middleware by saying off page, and we're going to pass uh, an argument to it. So we can actually pass an argument to this function. And this argument will be an array containing all the users are all the roles that are able to access this endpoint. So for example, to be able to see the, the grades, let's say that the only people who have uh, a role of teacher, or I don't know, um, admin, something like that, right, we won't allow students to access this, this um, endpoint. So you can see that our auth page middleware over here takes an argument, which is a bit different from what usually middlewares do, which they usually don't take an argument from whenever you call them. So to do to, to make this work, what we can do is instead of this auth page, we can say, um, permissions, we're gonna call the this will basically represent the array we passed inside of this. So all the users that are, are permitted to access this endpoint, and inside of here, we can return a function, which takes rec, res and next. So basically, it's just a simple middleware. But since we're taking here an argument to this function, we have to do it this format right here, and actually access rec, res and next inside of it. So now that we have access to rec, res and next, what we want to do is we just want to first of all, get the role. So let's say user role is equal to rec dot body dot um, role. Remember, we said that our users sh should be defined like this, they should have a property um, called role, which defines their role. So we're just gonna um, grab that from the body. And this will be passed through the body, right? So we're going to grab that through the body. And now what we can do is we can ask, okay, if 
permissions, which is an array, includes, which is a function in JavaScript, which basically checks to see if whatever we put inside of here exists in this array. So we're going to say if this, um, if, if this endpoint, if the permissions in this endpoint includes the user role who is trying to make the request, then we can just call next. So we're saying move forward with the request. This person is authorized. But if it doesn't include, um, if we try to enter as a student and the permission is only for teachers, then we can just return a res dot status. Um, and let's pass a status like 401, which means unauthorized um, dot JSON. And let's pass a JSON saying like, um, um, you don't have permission something like this. And basically what this will do is it will obviously get the permissions that we passed over here for each endpoint. So for this one, we said that only teachers and admins can, um, can and can make this request, it will get the permissions, then it's going to return a function, and it, we get the request information through this function. And with that, we can access the user role, then we can ask, okay, if permissions include the the, cur the user role of the user who's making the request, then move forward. Else, let's just say that the user isn't permitted and not move forward with the request. So for now, let's actually try this. I'm going to copy this fake um, user that I created over here. I'm going to pass that in the request. Let me see if everything is working. You can see we are running on port 3001. And we have access to the we, we put the middleware in this endpoint. So let's make this request. If we try to run the course grades request right now, it should give an error. And the reason why it gives us you don't have permission is because we actually haven't passed a user over here. But if we want to have permission to this, we can pass a user. And um, why is it not allowed? Oh, because this is JSON. So we have to pass it like this. So we're going to pass a JSON inside of here containing all the information for the user and the role as student. So it should still say you don't have permission. As you can see right here, give us a 401 un unauthorized and it says you don't have permission. But if I change this to teacher, now it should return the information. If I change this to admin, it should return the information because those are the two authorized roles that we passed in our middleware, as you can see right here. So this is very basic. And this is actually um, similar to what you would usually do um, when you're trying to manage user roles in an, in, in an API, right? Um, however, let's now work on how can we authorize users for like based on courses, right? Because currently, we, we haven't created that middleware. So I can do this and you will say you have permission to access course to 20. But if I put something like that doesn't even make sense over here, it was just say this, right? It doesn't even, um, it doesn't even check to see if what we put here is a, a letter, like is, is a number. So that's something that we have to do, right? Um, so how do we do that? Let's come here to middlewares. And let's look at the auth course middleware. Since we're not grabbing any arguments from our um, middleware over here, we can just say something like auth, um, auth course, and not even pass any arguments inside of here. We're just going to say auth course. And because of that, we can just grab rec res and next directly from here. And instead of this function, what we can do is we need to first of all, get the course number. So we need to get the number that we are currently um, passing over here at the top. So if I try to access course 345, we should um, get that number by saying something like rec dot params dot dot number. And why is it dot number? Because that's how I called it over here in our route. So this is how we access um, this rector, the, the, the course number. However, there's something important, we obviously want to make this into a number because that's how we defined it over here. We said that courses are numbers and not strings. So we just need to convert this to an integer, we can say something like parse int or just use the number function as well. But I'll use parse int. And this will be converted into an integer so that we know which course number we we are actually trying to access. And then we can do something very similar to what we did before, we can ask, okay, if and then like if um, rec dot body dot courses dot includes the course number, because remember, each user has a list of courses. So we're just accessing that list and saying if that list includes the course number, then we want to say next and move forward with the request. Else, we want to do something exactly the same as we did before. So I'll just return this message, but I'll just change it a bit like you don't have access to the to the course or yeah, access to this course, something like that. Um, like this. And now, that this is basically done. Um, 
we can just um, try to access this over here. Now we should try to see if this is working. Let's try to come over here. You can see that we're passing a, a list of courses that includes 220, 213, 187, and 287. So let's try to access the, the course 345. It should say you don't have access to this course. But now let's try to access the course um, 220, something like that, 220. Um, you should say you have permission to see the course to 20. So that's basically it. Um, the, as I mentioned before, there are more advanced ways of doing this. However, this is the basic implementation. If you're trying to build a large scale application, this is kind of like the approach. However, you would have to uh, like handle it um, with more security, that if, if you know what I mean. Basically, I would definitely use tokens. I would definitely um, not pass them directly like this. However, this is great for beginner projects. This is great for understanding how to manage user roles in an API. So that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting um, three times a week during university and it's and it's been like um, a lot of work and I would really appreciate it if you guys could leave a like so um, we can grow the channel so that I can continue posting to you guys. So that's basically it. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.